Is a Ram 1500 suitable as a touring vehicle? Welcome to Shop Talk episode number four and I'm Jimmy from Core Off Road. Today we're joined by James, the Ram specialist at Rockingham Ram, Brent, our operations manager here at uh, Core Off Road, and also Scotty, who is one of Core Off Road's valued customers. So, boys, we've got a fair bit of information to try and cover today about the Rams. We're going to be talking about performance. Um, we're also going to be covering fuel economy, GVM, GCM, value for money with the 1500s. There's quite a bit to cover. The first thing we're going to start off with is performance. Now, Brent, we recently did, uh, Jody did a video on her DT Ram yep. with the Manta exhaust system, what kind of performance are we getting out of a 1500? Well, surprisingly, <laughs> um, and I think everyone was a little bit shocked at this, um, from just a cat-back Manta exhaust system uh, that we did on Jody's Ram, yep. we were able to gain um, a sizable amount of torque, um, and to put it accurately, it was 100 Newton metres of torque at 2,500 RPM, yep. which is right where you sort of want it to be. Um, that torque to torque range, the main gains we had in the torque there was from 2000 to about 3000 RPM. So when you're towing, that's right about where you want it to be. Yep. Um, the horsepower gain was around the 35 horsepower throughout the entire rev range. Yep. Um, it's a massive difference, isn't it? It was huge. Yep. And for a cat back only system, yep. um, well worth it. And Scotty, you can be the judgment, mate. We recently fitted a Manda exhaust yeah. to your Ram. Yep. Um, fuel efficiency wise, I know they always sound better. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, but I think you've also noticed a, a bit of a fuel gain as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we got um, mine bolted on just in time for a southwest trip. So yep. yeah, it was nice sticking that on, not only for the noise, but yeah, noticeable with the fuel economy yep. as well. So. And Brent, your Express has got one as well. Yep, mine's got the same exhaust. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I dropped on average about a litre per hundred yep. um, around town. Which makes a massive difference. You know, if you're doing 100,000 Ks of the lifespan of your car that you're going to keep it for, that one litre per hundred, it may not seem like a lot, but it does make a massive difference, definitely. If you do want to see Jody's Ram video, check it out up here. It was pretty good, and it's a good comparison of fuel consumption and power gains of the 1500, which was on Jode's DT model, which is sitting on the hoist. Now, Scotty, you've been four wheel driving for years, all right, and you've had multiple four wheel drives. What made you choose the 1500? Um, for, for us personally, um, it's all about the family um, and safety aspects. Um, yeah, we come out of a 2012 BT50, so it was, you know, it was coming on 10 years old, um, 200,000 K, so it was time to, to make a move. And, had a good look around it, like everyone does when you start to tow a bit of weight, like we've got a three tonne fully loaded caravan, so yep. uh, we felt that the that platform that we were in with the BT50, like whilst it did it comfortably and was a good good rig for us for many years, I just wanted to take that opportunity as we are due for an upgrade to step into something that was going to do it, not work as hard, yep. um, and still, you know, buffer the vehicle around a lot less than what the, the BT was buffered around, and um, yeah, and it's... It's, it's great, like, uh, yeah, it's been really good. Just every now and then when I'm cruising along, tying the van, and I'll look back and see the girls just spread out, and, like, oodles <laughs> of room, um, yep. this is comfortable. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's been a really good platform, and yep. yeah, stoked. Heaps like, more room for the kids. Oh, it's incredible, yeah. Yep. Like, so much room in the in the back seat. So, yep. boy, and the whole pack. James, though, you're selling them on a daily basis. Yeah. What's the, the, what's the main thing you see people come out of an existing model into a Ram? What are they sort of looking for? Is it the same as what uh, Scotty was? Well, a lot of people wanting, wanting the high towing capacity at four and a half ton, and the, the, comfort, the comfortable of the car, the rideability. Yep. Um, they're very smooth on the road, they're very quiet. Um, they are a petrol. Um, I mean, a lot of the people coming out of are either 200 series, Grand Cherokees, BT50s, D-Maxes, Rangers. Yep. So it's a wide range of cars, yep. and it's not just one particular car that people are coming out of. And that, that longer wheelbase and the wider wheelbase over, I guess we'd call it a typical dual cab, yeah. like you guys can't see, there's a D-Max sitting right in front of us, that, that extra length and the extra width when you are towing, 
it makes a massive difference. You know, I had a 79 series um, previously and towing the exact same van between the 79 and the Ram, it's chalk and cheese, mm. that's all. Um, I guess the styling side, like Brent, you were the same. You know, what did you come out of previously? Um, yeah, I came out of a MP300, yep. um, which we'd pretty much done every, <laughs> everything we could possibly do to that. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was anything left. No. Um, and yeah, like James said, I wanted the increased towing capacity. So yep. that was my decision, increased towing capacity and the extra room for kids yep. in the back. And what are you towing? Um, just my camp trailer. It yep. is the biggest dual fold camp trailer you can buy on the market. <laughs> Um, so it's not a light camp trailer by any yeah. means. Um, it's probably around the two and a half ton mark. Yep. Um, so it is still a large camp trailer, but the Ram just does it with ease. Yep. So. Big difference between the Nav. Yeah, between the Nav. The Nav did it, but it was always pushing it. Yeah. And the Nav was pretty worked. Yeah, the Nav was worked. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was sort of on the edge a bit, and I don't know how long yeah. it would have kept doing that and being that reliable for. Yeah. And that was sort of the biggest thing I noticed was the stability side of things. You know, where the 79 series used to walk around with the van on the back compared to a US truck, you just, you, you don't know that yeah. it's there. Yeah, that's all. Back to yeah. Actual hour there. yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, they do it with ease. At the end of the day, they're designed to tow. Um, the fatigue is such a big thing. Like when, you, when you're touring for hours on end, when you actually rock up to your, to your destination and jump out feeling somewhat refreshed, you know, you've got cool, um, cool seats and stuff in the Laramie yeah. and... So just those little things and just, yeah, you're not wrestling the steering wheel constantly with, yep. the, with the van on. So. Yeah. And going on to the models, James, there's sort of five models really, isn't there? Yeah, so we've got our Express Crew Cab, which Brent's got, which is our, our new um, entry level. We did have the Quad Cab, which has been discontinued. Okay. Uh, there yep. is still a few around that you might be able to pick up. Yeah. Um, then you sort of go to a Warlock, um, which is based on the DS, but it's got leather interior and push button start. Yep. Um, and they're two different platforms. So they're, they're, there's DS yeah, and, and DT. DT, DT and is the, the new model, which is what Jody, Jody's got, yep. um, which is a, a big difference in drive, I find, compared to DS. Yep. Um, it's, they've just re, redesigned it all. It's, it's yep. a very, very smooth, comfortable ride. Yep. Um, and then you sort of jump from Laramie, in the, the, sorry, the Laramie to a, to a Limited. Um, Limited's got like your air suspension, your, your sunroof, your, your yep. ram box is standard. It's got all the driver driver assist with your adaptive cruise and blind spot yep. and lane departure. It's just an awesome truck to drive. My old lady just picked hers one up yesterday. Oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but Ram Trucks Australia are going to run the DS and the DT model in parallel. Is that correct? For, for, for now, yes. Yep. Um, the, the, obviously, what they're telling us is we're still going to get the Express Screw Cab um, as well as the Warlock. Yep. Um, until they tell us otherwise, we'll, we'll continue to sell them alongside each other. Yeah. And there is quite a uh, styling difference, but between the two there is yes you know especially in the front end yeah you know that being a dt model in laramie the front end of scotty's being ds they did change quite a bit they did yeah i mean probably the biggest upgrade's been the headlights yep and um, a lot of people that we, we have sold cars to have commented how how the ds was a little bit dull in the night time yep. and as soon as people jumped straight into the dt what a difference i mean i've been driving the cars myself for what, since 2019 and yep yeah, going from a DS to a DT is a big, big difference. Yeah. Maybe a DS headlight upgrade, mate, might be something we need yeah. to look at. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I'll just uh, book me in. Book me yeah, in. book you yeah. in. Sorry, mate. <laughs> um, look, before we get into the GVM and GCM side of things, value for money. Yep. Now, pricing wise, like for an express model, yep. you're around the 100 grand mark. 106. Yep. Um, well, you're at 100, just over 106 drive away for the Express Crew Cab. Yep. Uh, your Warlock, you're starting about 117. Yep. Uh, DT uh, Laramie, you're up around the one, 136 mark now, mm -hmm. and five grand for your for your Ram boxes. Yep. Um, and then you're, you're limited, you're sort of at 162. Yep. So, yeah. But you're getting, and like as you boys would know, you're getting a hell of a lot of car. Oh, definitely. Like that Express, the Express side of things. You, you get a hell of a lot of car for the 106,000 and you compare that, say a 79 series for example, right? Yeah. Where you mid to high 80s for a dual cab 79. Mm. To get that 79 series as comfortable as what a Ram Express is, 
It's going to cost you more than 106 grand. I can tell you that right now. By the time you do a seat upgrade, everything like that, plus you've got to put something on the back because they come as cab chassis, that, that 106 will rack up really quick. Yeah, That's all. And when you go back and compare the two, at 79s here is one of the most common upgrades that we do is new front seats. Yeah. You know, just to try and make it more comfortable, I can guarantee I would rather do 12 hours behind the wheel in one of them than I would my 79 series that I had, <laughs> that's all. So, look, before we head over to GVM and GCM, I think that kind of covers a bit of value for money okay. for customers and a bit of information, you know, why you guys kind of chose the Ram. Yeah. Um, look, at the moment, we've got full winter merch range on our website. So, if you want to get your hands on some of our winter hoodies, jackets, merchandise, head over to our website and check it all out. We've got plenty of good gear on there. Now, GVM upgrades, one thing with the Rams that gets a bit of conjecture is payload. Yep. All right, now, in the scheme of things, it is a little bit lighter from factory, depending on what the customer's trying to do. If they're not planning on putting accessories and they're using it as a towing vehicle, yep. it's perfect. Not an issue. But from what we do, with putting a canopy on it and things like that, when we're comparing it to other platforms, the payload side of things is a little bit light on. Mm. And I know we were searching quite hard for a long time to find a GVM solution for it. Um, Tough Dog finally got their certification mm. sorted and there's Ram 1500 GVM upgrades flying out the door here. So a few weights now, each vehicle has the same GVM? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. So there is a slight difference. If you are looking at buying a, an older model, there is a difference between the DT and the DS model. Yep. Um, and the payloads vary anywhere from, say, 700 kilos up to around 830 in payload from factory, mm -hmm. depending on what model whether it has RAM boxes. I'm assuming that the 700 kilos of when I was looking yesterday was the limited. Yes, because it's air, air suspension. Air yeah. suspension, it's got more fruit, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So the GVM side of things. Now with GCMs, one thing with the US trucks is GCM typically they've got heaps. Yeah. You know, the GCM of a new model, Laramie being DT limited, it's 7,700. You know, that's a long cry from what something like a D-Max yeah. or a Ranger has, yeah. which that GCM side of things is also what people are chasing over and above what GVM, yeah. that's all. Um, we're not going to touch too much on GVM and GCM. We've got other videos that cover a lot of that. The payload side of things and the GVM upgrades with Tough Dog. So Tough Dog's GVM upgrade increases the GVM by 439 kilos. Now that covers the quad cab model, the express model, which is like Brent's behind yeah. us, the DS model Laramie, which is what Scotty's got, and the Warlock as well. Now the guys at Tough Dog are feverishly working on the GVM upgrade for the DT model, which is coming. So stay tuned because we get a hell of a lot of inquiries and questions about GVM upgrades on the DT also. Um, Brent, the shocks with Tough Dog. Yep. They, they get a 41 mil foam cell. Yep. They're a pretty good quality shock, aren't they? They're a really good quality shock for the money. Yep. Um, yeah, they're the great sort of mid range yep. shock, um, which, you know, unless you're going to do real serious off roading, yeah. um, rock crawling or whatever that happens to be, yeah. you don't really need anything much more. Yep. That's it. And like even the warranty side of things. So, yeah. For commercial, you're three years, and for private, you're four year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is killer. Mm. That's awesome, you know, for a company to back their product um, as much as Tough Dog do, it's awesome. Yeah. That's all. The other thing with the Tough Dog GVM kits, they do both pre and post rego. Now we've got some customers of yours that their cars are uh, sitting there, and we're doing uh, pre rego GVM, which gives you federal approval covering your GVM in every state in Australia. So that pre-rego side of things, as opposed to state-based, yeah. it's one thing that a lot of customers want. They want, that's all. Um, there is other options out there with state-based 
GVM upgrades for the Rams. If you are doing it, it doesn't cost you any more to do it as pre rego That's right. That's all. And it just gives you the peace of mind whether you move in a state or you sell the vehicle. You know, if Brent, you were to pack up and head over to Queensland, your state based GVM upgrade with your RAM wouldn't, wouldn't be compliant mm. over there. Mm. And you'd have to get it re inspected and re signed off and everything like that. That's mm. all. So, that pre rego GVM side of things, killer. Yeah, that's all. And it just gives the customer a bit of peace of mind. That's all. Um, so, I guess the next bit is going to be fuel economy. <laughs> now, <laughs> before we get into the fuel economy side of things, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and ring the bell notification to stay up to date with all of Core Off-Road's latest videos that are about to drop. Now, fuel consumption. <laughs> there's a lot of forums and there's a lot of information about how much that 5.7 litre Hemi chews. Now, to start off with, we did Jody's video with the Manta exhaust. We did pre and post Manta. We chose a, a one hour, like hour one ten hour, minutes yeah. or something like that that it was. It was kind of half-half of highway work and kind of a bit of ram town. Jodes did a trip out, jumped on the highway, headed down to Mandra, through town, and then back up the coast road, back to Rockingham. It, even I was surprised. Yeah. That's all. What figures we got off that? Yeah. Like it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, and she was using cruise control where she yep. could to keep everything consistent. Yep. Same fuel, all that sort of stuff from the same place. Yep. So try to keep it consistent as we can. Yep. Um, yeah, and before the exhaust, it was ten point eight liters per hundred. Yep. Um, and after the exhaust, it was nine point eight. Yeah. So but that liter. one liter per hundred, which is mm -hmm. the same as what I got out of mine. Yep. Um, just from the exhaust, mm -hmm. which also gives you all that torque gain for your towing. Yep. Um, is yeah, it's it's like money even for nothing. even the fuel saving side. Put that section aside to get another hundred newton meters of torque at that two and a half thousand RPM, which is your rev range when you're towing. It's worth every cent. Yeah. That's all. Now, Scotty, I know, mate. You, <laughs> I know you've got some fuel consumption stories, yeah. and I think Brent. You've had your ram a lot longer than Scotty. Yep. And you've done a few more Ks towing. It's not so much a vehicle. It's getting used to the transmission. Is that correct? Yeah, the transmission and how you drive it. Yeah. Um, I went from a turbo diesel mm -hmm. to a petrol, which was, um, I've had petrol before, but towing with one mm -hmm. with a lot of weight was a learning curve. Yep. Um, yeah, you've just got to tow a few times, see what the car's doing, um, try not to let it labour is mm -hmm. a big thing. Um, when they labour, if when you come to a slight hill, instead of kicking back one gear, they'll kick back two gears and then they'll rev real hard yep. and they'll hold that gear for a long time and then they'll take a while to shift and all those sort of things. So yep. finding a nice constant speed, which I think you ended up doing, Scotty. Yeah, I've got it now, man. Um, yep. And locking it back either sixth or seventh, depending on what that speed is. Yep. Um, and sort of just learning how to drive the car and yep. how you use the throttle and that sort of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it was a big, makes a big difference. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah. Now, Scotty, your first trip, mate. Now, you, <laughs> you never got divorced. Yeah, let's, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, right. So, yeah, first trip, um, we decided to head down to uh, Denmark. So, uh, taking a family on, sort of done that trip from the Manda region. So, we're out through dwelling up, uh, quite hilly. Um, then, you know, down Albany Highway, then cut through Mount Barker down to Denmark. So quite a lot of hills. And that's towing as well, towing the van. Towing yeah. the three-ton van. Um, yeah, I'll never forget the look on uh, Miss's face when we pulled up to the petrol station. She's like, "This is no fuel again." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, sorry." Um, so we lunched on that trip. We'll be br brutally honest. We did uh, 30 liters a hundred. Yep. So for me, coming from the BT50, initially. Pretty much we had kittens, we're like, oh wow, that's um that's up there. But then I guess when I got over that initial wow, that's a big figure, we sort of look back at what I did in the BT50. I'm a, um, on a bad day in the BT50, like absolutely wringing its neck. Um, we were we we're running 25, almost 26 litres, 100. Yep. So so when you you look at it, um, when you compare it to that, and it's like, well, we've got you got to pay to play at the end of the day, I reckon, to get that yeah. comfort, the power. Um, it's not a cheap um, a hobby as it is to, to camping and get all set up, but yep. um, 
But what I put it down to was like it's just a really steep learning curve. I went from a manual, I went from a diesel, and I went from a long range fuel tank. So yeah. that just sort of compounded in my mind when at first, and I was like, oh, have I done the right thing? Have I not? But then um, I spoke to Brent, I spoke to yourself, did a lot of research, yeah. and I went, I reckon it's just it's got to be the way we're driving it because all the research I did, everyone told me three and a half, four ton, we're claiming around 21s, 22s. Yeah. Um, bad day 25, so I was like, it's 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 me for sure. Um, <laughs> and what I, what I was getting caught out with with the manual and the BT, I'd have it on cruise control, and it had I had time. I'd start hitting a bit of an incline, and I'm like, all right, cool, kick it off cruise, drop it a gear, and go. Yep. But the ram, she's like, all right, you want it to hundred up this hill, no problems at all. <laughs> <laughs> Drops two cogs, and you're like, whoa. So, it's on yeah. the limit. Yeah. So what I, what I learned, so, um, yeah, sort of went back and went, right, I let's sort of work this out and I found, um, just found that happy medium. Um, so what that was for us, telling the three ton Jayco journey was to drop, um, uh, to lock it out of seventh and eighth. So it'll only go as high as sixth in the box. Um, and then just dropping five kilometers or roughly five. We sit on around 95 to 97 now. Mm -hmm. But I found it's just that sweet spot sitting in sixth at, yep. at that um, for towing our van. Um, and it returns of good numbers heading down to, well, so I did like 21. Um, heading down to Margaret River and back over the holidays. So. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, huge. and that's just your familiarisation with yeah. the car. Yeah, you know, as you said, coming out of a manual diesel yeah. uh, to an auto petrol, yeah. they're, they're chalk and cheese. Yeah, yeah. at yeah. the end of the day, you know. Um, and we all know petrol love to rev. Mm. And that's, what, that's what they like. As well, they sound better. They there, sound too. Too. Yeah, they yeah. do sound, especially with a Manta exhaust. They sound bloody awesome. Yeah. Um, you need to know being behind one fair bit, mate. Uh, <laughs> yes. Boom. So Brent, Brent and I, Brent and I have had a on a private road, of course. Of course. Um, had a couple of couple of drag races. I think three so far, yeah. uh, okay. and I've lost every single one. Uh, so looking at that picture of Brent's ram, that's what I normally see um, <laughs> when we take off. Jim, Jimmy owns an F three fifty, just so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, maybe not off the line. Uh, there's a bit of conjecture oh. there. There's a bit of conjecture there. Maybe we should put a ton in the back of each one and then see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> that might be another another episode. And same thing, James. Though, from fuel consumption. Yeah, I the, mean, obviously. Uh, a lot of the customers we sell the cars. I mean, we talk to a lot of our customers regularly. Yep. Uh, a lot of them, especially guys coming out of 200 series, we, we always ring them up and find out how they're going. I mean, a lot of them were saying that they're getting the same fuel economy out of the Ram yep. coming out of the 200 series, which was very surprising initially when mm -hmm. we first took on the franchise. Um, but now it's sort of like, it's just, we expect to hear it, yep. which, I mean, a lot of the guys we've sold them to have been towing for a number of years and they all think they're awesome cars to tow yep. with. So. Even comparing to my 79. Well, yeah, you know, exactly. which is the exact same engine as 201 less turbo. Um, even my 79 used to be thirsty. Yeah. That's all. Um, you compare it to what the boys are getting in their Rams, towing around, mm -hmm. I, I was probably exactly the same, if not more, in my 79. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Um, one, one thing I want to try and touch on. Now, there's a lot of US truck haters, all right, that'll say... The US trucks are too wide for Aussie trucks. They'll never make it. I can tell you now, it's an absolute crock of shit, all right? We've had a DT on the hoist today, measuring the chassis for our new range of canopies for the DT models. Now, a, a CHOP 200 series, right? At the very back of the car where the wheel wells are, they're 1,970 mil wide. Now, that's how wide the back of a 200 series is. And we build a 1980 wide canopy to suit a CHOP 200. Now the back of this thing is 1970 mil wide. <laughs> now I don't know, the DS was maybe 20 mil wider. Correct. All right, it might be 1990 or 1995. So for all of you guys that jump on the keyboard and put up comments and everything like that, that then things are no good for touring Australia because they're too wide, you'll destroy your car. It's exactly the same as a 200. And you don't ever hear of anybody saying that 200 series is too wide to go down bush tracks in Australia. Mm -hmm. So there's some facts for you about the 1500s, and they are suitable as a touring package. Yeah. You know, um, especially if you're going through, if you're just towing and not doing a canopy or anything like that, mate, they're straight out of the box, ready to go package. Correct. One, yeah. of, one of the things I really like about it is I was, I was on the fence like, trying to work out whether to pull a, pull a, tr a trigger on a, on a 1500. 
and uh, I was like, righto, I've got the 830 kilo payload. Um, I, at this stage, I'm not, I don't want to put a canopy on it. I want to keep it simple, but what if I don't like keeping it simple? If I want to go down the path of putting a canopy on, I'm going to run out of the payload real quick when you throw the ball weight on. Yep. But then when you called me and said that there was the Tough Dog GBM upgrade now, I was like, I've got, I've got a fallback plan. So I can yep. run it simplistic because I tow a van, so I don't need a full kit out in the back. Yep. But if things change, and we always like to sort of plan for the future as much as you can, it's like, well, I've got a, got a plan B there. We can chuck mm -hmm. the GBM upgrade in it and uh, yep. canopy and... The whole box and dice. Sorry, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're, we're already in trouble. It's Scotty's actually 10th anniversary today, and he's here with the boys doing a shop talk episode. Yeah. So, mate, you might have be staying in the van tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Me and Ron. Sort of yeah, you and Ron. <laughs> but look, it gives you the option. And, you know, we touched on before that you can do pre-rego GBMs with Tough Dog. You can also obviously do post-rego. So, you know, someone like Scotty. Uh, if your vehicle mate, you decide to do your GBM upgrades, no issues. Yeah. It just means that it's going to be state based. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Um, West is best. West is best. That's <laughs> right. But look, it's definitely in in my eyes, the 1500 platform is very suitable to deck out as a touring vehicle. We've done how many bull bars, winch packages, rims, oh. tires, roof racks. So many, they are, they are really, really popular. They and are. James would know from sales figures and stuff like that. Yep. Then, yeah, yeah hard, hard things to get one. Yeah. Just look at the wait times for them. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. hard to get at the moment. They are popular. I mean, but that's not just Ram. It's, well, it's a lot of cars. Oh, well, yeah. it's a lot. Like, how yeah. many DMAX customers have we got yeah. that mm. they've been waiting, waiting 12, yeah. 14 months for their DMAX yeah. and they're still waiting? Yeah. You know, with no light at the end of the tunnel. So it's not. Just ram. I think that's the industry. Well, we're, we're not that bad, so we're all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, ram's probably one of the better ones in the scheme of things. You know, three or four months ago, customers who were ordering 79 series, yeah. the Toyota were saying, you 12 months at a minimum, and when we get close to that, we'll give you a bit more of an update. Yeah. You know, so when you look at it in the automotive industry at the moment, the wait time on a ram, it's not too bad compared to some of the others. Mm. You know, for sure. Even just the, the appearance. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know something about having that US truck. Yeah, it's I don't know. They're just big. Yeah. They're bold. They're yeah. I don't know. It's like an extra level of respect when you drive one around. <laughs> yeah, on it is, yeah. Especially when you get to drive one just about every day. They're, yeah. they're awesome. Yeah, yeah that's so. right. Definitely. It's got so. nothing to do with compensation either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah that's bad. I guess. I got an F three fifty. Like that's not saying too much. <laughs> so look, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash the like button, give us a subscribe, and hit the bell notification to stay up to date with all of our latest videos that are coming out. I'd like to say thanks, boys, Cheers, for mate. joining us. I think it was thanks a pretty good up. shop yeah. talk, yep. and I, uh, I think we covered quite a bit of content. So any Ram owners out there, if you have any questions. Or want to know some more info, make sure you hit a comment, let us know, or give the sales team a call to try and get a bit more info. Or obviously James at Rockingham Ram, if you're looking to buy a new one, that's it. make sure you give the boys a call. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, the adventure begins where the bitumen ends.